Well, what's up, gang? Thanks for tuning back into the channel. So obviously it is a very extremely wet and nasty weekend. Can't really do much outside. So what better time than to come up with an experiment? So I've always kind of wanted to test one of these residential fridges off of one of my batteries to see how long you can truly get off of a battery. I've done a few tests like this in the past, but I've used my little ice chest here, my, my chest freezer here in the, in the garage, and it ran a couple days, but I don't think that thing pulls as much power as a full-size residential fridge behind me. So I'm gonna show you the setup that I have, and we're gonna run this, and I'm doing it on the weekend, A, because my wife thinks this is a terrible idea. This is a working fridge, it does have our food in it, and if it, does, if it doesn't run for, for over two days, I'm gonna be here to monitor it, to plug it back into grid. I've got a watt meter hooked up to my inverter, so I wanna see A, how many watts does this, what's the max wattage that this fridge pulls on startup when that compressor runs. And this watt meter actually will uh, monitor and, and record the highest wattage that that refrigerator pulls throughout this test. It's also gonna give me the amount of watt hours cumulatively that, that it ran off of this battery. But I also have a, a shunt hooked up too. So that's gonna give me the same information too. So we'll be able to compare to make sure everything is kind of kosher with one another. But let me show you the setup and uh, we're just gonna get this thing going to see how long this battery and this inverter setup will run this full size residential fridge. And just to show you, this fridge is working. It is cold in there. We've got stuff in there that uh, we use and it is cold, but I've got my 3000 watt inverter. I've got the watt meter hooked up on the side and I'm gonna be using a 24 volt battery for this setup to see if there's any more efficiency gain using a 24 volt setup instead of a 12 volt. So this you can see is from DJL BER MPW. What a name, huh? 24 volt, 100 amp hour, uh, 2560 cumulative watt hours is what this thing is rated for. So I've got this hooked up. Everything is good to go. I've got my shunt ready to go. We're sitting at 27.12 volts. I've got my app set up. This is the app to that shunt. So everything is cleared out. Everything is at zero. My elapsed uh, amp hours is at zero. So I'm gonna get this fridge unplugged from the grid. It is behind the wall and we're going to plug it up to this inverter and start the test. It is 8.57. April the 20th, 8.57 a.m. So let's get this fridge hooked up to this inverter and uh, let's get this test started. I can't understand why my wife thinks this is a terrible idea, but hopefully I can squeeze back here and get this cord unplugged from this fridge and hopefully it's long enough. I didn't even think about that. Okay, that fridge is now off. Yeah, this should be long enough. Oh, okay, so you can see here, hopefully, the light is not on in the fridge anymore. This fridge is turned off. I'm gonna let this sit for about two minutes, guys, and then I'm gonna plug it up because I want that compressor to kick on when I first turn it on so we can hopefully get a pretty accurate boot up reading of what that compressor takes. So I'm gonna let that sit there and we'll come back when I plug this in. All right, that should be good enough. So we're gonna get this plugged into the watt meter here. I'm gonna get my inverter cut on. Let's get my app up first. All right, naturally I get a phone call right when this starts. But anyway, everything is zeroed out. Fridge is plugged into the watt meter. I'm gonna get this inverter cut on and hopefully we can kind of start to monitor. So we're only pulling not even one amp right now. There we go, six amps, six and a half amps. 170 watts. This watt meter is zeroed out. So if I go to kilowatts, I'm down to 0.001 kilowatts. So this is zeroed out. And it looks like so far the highest wattage, 754 watts. Wow. That's what it took to start that compressor. Let's go back to kilowatts used. Okay, now we're at 0.0002 kilowatts. So everything's good. Shunt's looking good. Battery's obviously working. So, gang, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this thing run and I'm gonna monitor it very, very closely because obviously I don't want all of my food to spoil if I don't catch this thing when it dies. Um, but luckily it's not too hot outside this weekend, so I think I'll have a few hours uh, of buffer if this thing does cut off and I don't catch it right away, I can come back and plug it in. But 
I'm gonna monitor this throughout this weekend and see how long um, I think I can get off this battery. I honestly have no idea. Let me get, know what you guys think. I'm betting a day and a half, maybe two days off of a 100 amp hour, 24 volt battery because that inverter is around 88% efficient. So I'm losing some capacity from that battery just keeping that inverter turned on. So we'll see. I really have no idea how this is gonna work out, but uh, I'll check back in throughout this video to kind of give you guys an idea. Now, obviously guys, this is kind of like the worst case scenario. I have no solar hooked up to this whatsoever. I mean, if you just put a 100 or 200 watt panel out there in the driveway, it's going to prolong the runtime of that battery in that fridge. But this is assuming you have no solar panels, you have nothing and you have a power outage for overnight. If you have a battery laying around and an inverter, how long is it gonna power a fridge? That's what this test is for. Not necessarily to see how long I can get this fridge to run and definitely with solar, that's not what this is about. So anyway, gang, I'll check back in throughout this uh, video and kind of let you know where the battery sits and monitor the amount of kilowatts we've used so far off of that watt meter. Well, checking in this evening, it is pretty much exactly nine o'clock in the evening on Saturday. So this has been running for right at 12 hours. And if we take a look here at the shunt, we are sitting at 26.43 volts. We have used a total of 29.89 amp hours. So almost 30 amp hours. My battery meter is showing we're at 70%. If I can get that, it's really hard to, to make out with this camera, but we're sitting at 70%. So let's take a look here at some of the data that we have so far. Uh, the high that we have peaked on this fridge is 1,320 watts. And we have used 655 watt hours so far. 120 volts. And let's get back to kilowatts. Okay, so we haven't even used a thousand watt hours yet, guys, and we're at, we're at 12 hours in. So I'm gonna come back in the morning and check to see where we're at, but I don't really have any concern about this thing shutting off in the middle of the night. Again, we're at about 70% remaining, at least according to the shunt. So uh, I think it's going pretty well, but we'll check back in tomorrow to see where we're at. Well, good morning, gang. It is Sunday morning, 9 a.m., so we are right at around 24 hours worth of running this battery off of this residential fridge. We are currently sitting at 43% battery capacity. My battery is at 26.14 volts. I have pulled a total of 56.66 amp hours out of that battery right there. And the fridge is still going strong, guys. Light is on, we are good. So. In 24 hours, I've essentially used a little more than half of that battery capacity. So extrapolating that data, I'm gonna keep this running, but I'm guessing you know, around two days, maybe a little bit less than two days, say around 40 hours. But what I think is the most interesting about this whole test is the amount of juice this compressor takes. So if I look to see what the highest wattage that this watt meter has registered, it is 1,320 watts. So that kind of helps you decide what size inverter that you would need. Now, granted, this refrigerator is around, I think, 12 years old. So I'm sure technology has gotten a little bit better and a little bit more efficient. But I have gotten a lot of questions before saying, how big of an inverter do I need to power a fridge? Well, in my opinion, you're going to need at least a 2000 watt inverter to handle that, that surge of 1320 watts that this fridge has pulled. It doesn't hurt to go bigger, but the bigger of an inverter you go, the more power that it just pulls directly from that battery just to keep that inverter going. So you don't wanna go huge, but you definitely wanna go big enough to be able to handle that surge. Now when this fridge is, is just running normally, it's pulling around 150 watts, but that 1320 watts was needed right when that compressor cut on for probably a millisecond, but that's enough to trip out some of these inverters that aren't, that aren't powerful enough. But overall, the battery's working great. The fridge is cold. Uh, I think it's pretty cool, but I'm gonna keep monitoring this, guys, and uh, we'll come back probably tonight, I'm guessing is when this thing is gonna be dead. But I don't know. I'll keep checking it throughout the day and let you know. All right, gang, it is going on around 32 hours, I believe. We're at 4.30 p.m., and this battery has put out 
80 watt hours. 79.48 watt hours. I've got a red warning, I'm 20% left, which makes sense, it's a 100 amp hour battery, so this shunt's telling me I got 20% left till it gets to 100 amp hours. So we're doing pretty well. Uh, let's see if we can see how many watt hours I have pulled. 1,726 watt hours. So far, we have been able to squeeze out of that battery. This was more of a test, again, to see how long this fridge would run with no solar, no grid, nothing, just this battery. And uh, I don't know if we're gonna make it to 48 hours. It's gonna be my luck that this battery cuts off at around 3 a.m. this morning, but I'm gonna keep it running and uh, I'll be able to check on the shunt exactly how many watt hours we were able to get and from that watt meter. So we'll check back in tomorrow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to call it a wrap on this test. It is almost 9 p.m. Sunday night. And you can see here, hopefully, that I'm up to 97.07 amp hours for a total runtime of 35 hours and 55 minutes. I've still got 2% left on the battery. That comes through. 2% right there. Might be easier to see right there. But overall, again, this is a 100 amp hour battery. And I was able to get out of this thing, let's see. If you can read sideways, 2,092 watt hours. So that's really not that bad considering the efficiency loss that you're gonna get running that inverter just to power that fridge. So to get, you know, over 2,000 watt hours, I'm gonna, I'm gonna consider that a win. I think that's pretty good. Cause again, remember this thing is rated at 2,560 watt hours. So overall, I think it was a pretty successful test guys. I, I was pretty much able to run it for, I'm gonna, say I could probably run it for 40 hours. I just don't want this to cut off in the middle of the night. That's why I'm cutting it just a hair short because I don't want all of our food to spoil, but I'm pretty sure I would be able to get up to around 40 hours uh, of total continuous runtime off of that battery. So I don't know if that helped anyone. I don't know if that gives you an idea of kind of what you need to do to size your system. Now, again, this fridge is around an 11 or 12 year old fridge. The ambient temperature this weekend was around 80 degrees. So that number is going to change if it's colder or warmer, that compressor has to run more or less. So there's a lot of variables in this test, but for me this weekend running that battery, I'm going to say I was able to get approximately 40 hours and the battery did great. The inverter did good and the fridge is cold. So, um, there you go, gang. That's what I do on my uh, off weekends where I'm bored. So, so I get to take all of this stuff down now, hook the fridge back up to grid and uh, we'll come up with another test here soon. So anyways, it was fun for me and uh, we'll see you folks soon. Thanks for watching.